Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm Imanina. I'm a designer and researcher at Kimusi. Um, well, I'm questioning that designer a little bit now after only scoring one out of five on the pub quiz and the design section <laughs> yesterday. So <laughs> thanks for that, Luke. <laughs> um, so yeah, my talk today is on social design under a capitalist society, and it's a short reflection on the limitations of designing for good. So two things I've been wondering about is how can we design to make a difference when money dictates the change that we can make? And how do we not hurt ourselves and others in the process? So I've broken this down into three reflections. Uh, my first reflection is, and this is kind of echoed in a lot of the talks I've been hearing as well, is that good design is only as good as the systems that allow it. So, oh, going ahead. So a bit of background, I entered this area of design research, service design, design innovation, whatever you want to call it, around three years ago. Although I've only actually really worked in that for about a third of that time. Um, the rest has been the struggle to find meaningful work without compromising on my values, where I can be accepted for me. Um, but yeah, I come from a product, so not the digital kind, um, and a craft-based practice of design. But I wanted to see how I could maybe adapt um, some of that design skills, some of that design knowledge, and do more towards designing positive futures, creating change in whatever way I could. Uh, what I've noticed over the past few years is that yes, the opportunity to use design in a meaningful way does exist, but we're also limited in what we can achieve. So in my place of work at Kimusi, um, as Akil has spoken about already, is we often work in spaces where we need to address societal challenges. Um, so healthcare is a big one, but we also work in spaces that address income inequality, uh, negative impacts on AI, marginalized communities, to name a few. Um, a recent project that I worked on, the brief was to improve the experiences of healthcare for black communities living with chronic pain. So we focused quite locally. Uh, we wanted to have a holistic approach. So chronic pain, for those who don't know, it's quite a complex health condition. It's not just pain, it's mental health. It impacts your day to day, it can prevent you from working, which then leads to low income, which then comes with its own set of problems and challenges, which then also exacerbate the pain. So as you can see, it's not an easy fix. Uh, we spoke to some amazing people, so from the residents who lived with chronic pain themselves, um, but also the doctors and health practitioners who also wanted to create a better environment for, um, for people to get the support and health care that they need. And we did everything right. So we included people in the design process from the beginning. We took on board um, people's feedback, what they had to say, and we shared that back. And in the end, we had some really great ideas and suggestions for how their experience could be improved. But in reality, much of it depended on the wider problems with the NHS to be fixed. So can we decrease long waiting times? Can we make it easier for people to get GP appointments? Can we change the rules that prevent people from accessing services such as therapy and physiotherapy on an ongoing, consistent basis? And in case you were wondering, the answer is no. Um, so although we did some really good design work, it was only as good as the wider system that allows it. These problems are, of course, kind of beyond the scope of the project, but it's hard to ignore given that if these things could have changed, that project could have had way more impact and changed the lives of so many more people. So it's hard sometimes to not come out of projects like this feeling a little bit disappointed. And you also you feel a sense of responsibility to the people you've invited to participate in the project. Um, it feels as though you're not been able to offer the change that they really need and want. So how do you deal with this? And this brings me to my next reflection. We can't adapt business-led approaches and apply them to socially-led design. So I usually come out of research sessions feeling quite emotionally exhausted. Uh, we speak with a lot of people, we're facing many different challenges. Um, and like I mentioned, we do a lot of work in the areas that address social issues. So this is kind of expected in the work that we do. And a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time, people who work in these areas of wanting to do good are in it because they've likely been affected by the challenges themselves. So whether there's been discrimination for their race, their gender, their class, or health issues, anything else, we come into it with a lot of care. So often we'll be faced with projects which can be quite triggering. So another project that I've been working on includes speaking about finances and to people who are struggling financially. And so I've been there, I've been that person who's struggled financially for a long period of time. In fact, this job that I have now is the first time I've had a salary. Um, and not to say that I can, I can understand 100% what other people are going through, but it can also bring up those feelings of 
the relatedness to the people that we're speaking with. And what it feels like we're doing sometimes with the research is we're re-traumatizing people by reliving their experiences. Our intentions are good, of course, and we say it's, it's needed a necessary part of the process in order to design better things, just like Amy was saying about stress cases. And of course, we need, we need and should be including these voices, the ones who are more often than not forgotten about or not included. Their voices are important and can offer an alternative perspective. And elevate, elevating their voices can strengthen action or change. But fundamentally, as designers and researchers working in this space, we're not trained to deal with what they have to say sometimes. And this can be potentially damaging. So one, to the participant who might feel like they're not being supported or feel like they're being cared for in the right way as a response to sharing their experiences with us. And two, to the researcher who might experience secondary trauma from bearing witness to testimonials of harm and suffering. Or for example, like mentioned, if we've been through that experience ourselves, it can also bring up our own previous trauma. And what it feels like we're doing is taking the standard design approach of which is normally quite business led. It's all about improving processes, which also happens to maybe be thinking about the, the customer because well, they need, need it to be for the customer to make right so they can make more money. But, um, but we're applying that same approach and using it in areas of social justice. And this is where I think social-led design needs improving. There needs to be more training in things such as trauma-responsive research. And this is also applicable if we're wanting to create more inclusive design systems as well. So this includes internal training for dealing with potentially triggering topics uh, for both the safety of researcher and participant. Creating support packages that we can offer participants, uh, links to signposting to relevant services, and setting up systems of care internally, um, checking in with ourselves and each other, uh, providing space to unload after research sessions. So these are just a few ideas and something that needs elaborating further. But even then, we're time restricted as projects are often in sprints or have quite a quick turnaround. Does that really offer space to unload? And what if we're having a bad mental health day or we start our period? So in my place of work, we're offered menstrual leave, but I've never actually taken it. Unfortunately, I can't just take my sinking of <laughs> when it starts with when a project deadline is due <laughs> or when we have to schedule research uh, activities. So that brings me on to my third and final reflection. Being kind to yourself might just be the most radical thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. So we can only do our best. So we can implement more caring systems. We can change our processes and adapt them to be more social-led rather than business-led. We can embed good values into our design practice as a given. But even then, in order for us to exist in this space in the design industry, we need to make money. But in order to make money, this often means sometimes something needs to be compromised along the way. Because peop the people with all the money, the organizations with all the money, with all the power, well, they're usually in it just to make more money. And I came across the term social return on investment recently. I understand the benefits of it for helping charities and social projects, being able to get more funding, but it's that thing of having to put a monetary value on social value all the time. It's like social value is only, social good is only valuable if it's also able to make money too. Why can't we just do good because it's good? And sometimes that means turning our approaches, pulling back on what we really want to de design. And that can be quite frustrating. So my intention of this talk wasn't to make us feel a bit hopeless, but rather the opposite. I just want, I wanted to highlight that changes can and need to be made. We can still hold our values and exist in this space. We just might come across some challenges. Challenges which we should speak up against, and maybe little by little, it might just have some lasting impact. But also if you, at the same time, if you don't have the energy to, that's okay too. Take time off when you need it and make it known. So the more we see others doing it, the more likely we are to. We all have to unlearn some bad habits. So let's make it okay to rest without guilt or fear of judgment. Let's normalize rest and kindness. I'm a big advocate for naps whenever you need to. <laughs> so be kind to yourself, pick your battles. Remember that the responsibility isn't just on you to change everything. Again, there's only so much we can do as individuals and as designers because we need good people in these spaces uh, where change can happen. We need designers who want to do good. And if we're always burnt out and not able to do that work, then we're not going to see that. So let's make it as easy as possible for people like this to exist and in these spaces and be allowed to create the change that this society needs.
Thank you for listening.